This is my blue 1982 Mercedes 300D. Now when I got this car, uh, it had been run without oil. So uh, that had taken its toll on several components. Um, most notably was the camshaft, which I replaced. One of the lobes started to go flat. And down in the depths, the vacuum pump, uh, the bearing had started to seize up a little bit. And so I swapped that out to um, with a different vacuum pump that was still good uh, in an effort to chase down a strange little metallic tapping that the car makes. It's very rhythmic. I'm going to start the car up so you can hear it. Then we'll probably pull the injectors, test those, and at some point here soon to pull the valve cover and double check that uh, nothing is going on with the cam or the uh, valve adjustment. So let me pop you on a tripod here. Now you might be able to hear that, it almost sounds like a rod knock, but I've pulled the pan, checked the bearings, and there's really no play. There's never been any metallic material in the oil filter. Oil comes out, looks clean, and we've put thousands of miles on it like this, and it really hasn't gotten noticeably worse or better with time. I actually just saw, you'll never see it on camera, I imagine, but cylinder two is bubbling around the injectors. So we've got compression leaking around that little crush washer. We're going to pull these out because I'll bet you right there that that bubbling is causing a misfire. Could be the injectors even got a wonky spray pattern, but I'd almost bet you that it's injector related. So to remove injectors from one of these 617s, you're gonna need a 17 millimeter wrench, which is the right size for the nuts on the high pressure lines. Okay. Set our hard lines off to the side, pull off our overflow lines if they'll come off. You're going to need a 27 millimeter deep socket. So I've got a half inch with a long extension here that fits on really nicely. <clears throat> you need a breaker bar. Now with a breaker bar, I think these are specced to be like 80 foot pounds or something. That did not feel like it should have been as hard with a ratchet. So in. Oh yeah, look at that. Something's wrong in cylinder two. Either it could just be that the injector is doing some ways. Oh, cylinder one is looks like an awful strange spray pattern, and it looks very wet on the end. I don't know if that's just um diesel or if that could be something more serious let me try the angle to pick oh yeah popped right up out yeah i think these were old i think i either reused these or something Ugh. Ah, how could i have been so foolish so our footage of the actual testing of these injectors didn't go quite to plan uh you could sort of see what was going on, but unless you really know what you're looking at with uh, testing uh, mechanical injectors, you're not going to see what I really wanted to show you. Yeah, and that's way low. That's down around like 1700 PSI. a lot better. So instead, I'm going to show you some pictures of how you can tell visibly by inspection that there's something wrong with that number two injector specifically. None of them were spectacular. They were all popping a little too low, 
which could mean that it's injecting the fuel earlier or that it's injecting too much or any number of different things. They should all be right around 2000 PSI for the turbo injectors. All of these five were around 1700 PSI, which is a lot closer to what non-turbo injectors should be. So lower pressure can cause some problems with atomization, which can cause problems with the way that the fuel burns and generally cause some issues in the combustion process. The number two has a lot of sooty buildup on the end and specifically if you look at number five see how if I can get the light to shine see how there's this silver inner part that's the actual nozzle then the outer part is the nozzle holder in the center is the pintle I believe it's called or the needle that moves to inject the fuel and when the pressure gets high enough it will push back against the spring in here yeah so anyways it's also built up all around the uh, holder because this crush washer was leaking now I've also got some pictures so we're gonna interject those pictures here of what these crush washers are like and I'm fairly confident that the injectors are to blame for our knocking noise. We're going to rebuild these and if I can compress it into a short enough time period that it's not going to get boring for all of you viewers then we'll do that and you'll see that shortly. We're going to have to leave the rebuilding the actual injectors for another video or assume that you're going to send your injector somewhere to get rebuilt because making that video is going to take far longer and uh, so in the end, I've got five freshly rebuilt injectors with DN0SD314 nozzles, which is one step up from the 265 nozzles. So we're going to use a brass brush to clean out these pre-chambers, just to make sure that they're uh, not got anything wrong down in there. It's very important to use brass on any part of this that you're going to try and clean because we don't want to leave big scoring marks in anything. Then we're going to add our brand new injector sealing ring. So of course, the tapered side goes down and this side goes up. So we're going to set those down in there, make sure that they sit in nice and flat. Now let's start putting injectors in. Now we're going to torque them, 70 to 80 newton meters. So we're going to set this to 75, 75 newton meters. put our return lines back on so now for our hard lines just fold these back down where they need to be and start threading on lock nuts You told me what I needed to do to fix this. Should have listened to you, George. 
Why are you licking the car? George, stop tasting the car. Are we not feeding you enough? We are gonna have some air in this system quite badly. So I'm gonna pump the primer pump to make sure that the low pressure side of the injector pump is free of air. George is gonna help by walking in front of the camera so you can't see what's going on. Let's zoom you out and we'll pump this. I don't know if you can hear that little like kind of sound. That is the overflow valve here opening. That indicates that that's all full of diesel. So now we're gonna try and start this thing up and see if this makes any difference. I'm going to have to compare to tell if that's any different at all. So, in conclusion, did the 314 nozzles turn this mild-mannered 617 into a tire-burning machine? No, not exactly. I'd say it has improved the low-end torque initially off the line a little bit. We'll have to see as everything kind of settles in where it wants to be, how it behaves after a while. But in the meantime, I'd say uh, there is an improvement. Um... How about as far as the rattle that we were trying to get rid of? I think it is greatly diminished. After reviewing the footage, comparing the before and after, I notice a little bit more kind of generic clatter, but less of it being pronounced like it's only one cylinder making a noise. It seems like there's a fairly consistent diesel noise across the the entire engine. Um, part of that could be because these nozzles I set a hair higher because all of the old ones were so low down at 1700 PSI and nozzles do tend to uh, kind of wear in and seat and the pressure drops a little bit so I set them around 2100 PSI pop pressure. Um, the spec is I believe dead on 1950, 135 bar so 1950 to 2000-ish is about where my goal is for them to settle into, but I set them a hair higher, so we'll see how that works, see how the car behaves for a little while, and if I need to, I can pull a shim out of each of them and drop them down a few PSI. So, with that being said, do you think you should service the injectors in your 617? That's up to you. I'd say it made a dramatic difference in how the car sounds and how it behaves. It has a lot more bottom end power now, which could be entirely that uh, now 
all five cylinders are injecting properly. So it may not be that the nozzles have increased the power output at all. So only time will tell. But anyways, hopefully this was helpful to some of you. Um, thanks for watching.